I have three filters available to take a look at today. I have the screw in type which will be fitted to most light aircraft in the GA category. This particular filter has been removed from a small car but it's very similar to the type that's in the DA40. Most modern cars these days have a cartridge type of filter. Now these are a bit kinder to the environment, they're easier to dispose of. Let's start off with the screw-in type of filter which we'd find in the DA40 and uh, let's take it, we're going to half it and we'll have a look inside. So here's the filter in two parts. Um, just point out a couple of features on the filter. Here you can see the relief valve. So on a cold startup for example the oil is going to be too thick to filter. So to prevent the engine from starving the relief valve is going to open and we'll just have a little look at that. I'll take that out a second and just get my screwdriver and I can press down on that and you can see how that would work. Um, this is a pressure build and it'll build enough to be able to force that little valve down and uh, that's going to allow unfiltered oil into the centre tube through the top just momentarily enough to be able to get the engine started. So here's the main part of the filter. What I'm doing now is I'll be looking through here and having a really good look and checking for any type of foreign body material that may have made itself into there. Now these cardboard folds here are referred to as pleats. So the oil quite simply comes through these holes here, up around the outside of the filter, through the pleats and out through the centre. Some filters have an anti-drain back valve fitted here, this one does not. This filter is particularly good condition, the oil is not particularly too bad and it's been changed at what I would consider to be the appropriate time. And just for comparison purposes, if you take a look at the filter on the left and compare it with this filter in my hand on the right, you can see that the filter on the left should have been changed a long time ago. When refitting a filter, a brand new one, quite important to rub a little bit of oil around the seal and make sure it's nice and clean before you do so of course. That will ensure a really good seal between the filter and the engine. So next is the cartridge type of oil filter. There's not much to say about these other than when removed just check the pleats and make sure that you look through each one and check for any iron filings which of course would be indicative of an engine failure looming around the corner. If you just look to the left now you can see what it looks like as it's removed from the vehicle in the cradle. Now the new one is placed in the cradle ready to go. What's quite important at this point is to take the brand new o-ring which is supplied with the filter and place a little bit of grease around the ring and that's going to ensure a really nice good solid oil seal on the new filter. So what I've got here is a hydraulic fluid filter. The amount of bolts on the perimeter tell us straight away we're talking some pretty high pressures here. And the aircraft that this was taken off uh, would be around about 1500 to 3000 psi. This little fella here. That is used to actually clean the filter. And every now and again the engineers would rotate that through a few turns to actually clean the filter that's inside here. Let's remove the cover and have a look at what's inside this. Have a look at all this rubbish that's been filtered to date from this filter. Now that would have been stuck to this and of course as a result of 
turning this piece here at the bottom what you're actually doing is you're actually filtering the actual filter you're actually scraping all the bits of rubbish from the filter by actually turning that there's a bit more just dropped off there isn't it so that's quite incredible that it's got rid of that from a hydraulic system now that would have played havoc with all the valves and orifices that, that hydraulic fluid has to travel down so hydraulic fluid enters here it comes up through this hole here fills the chamber has to go through these pieces here and we'll remove this in a short while and have a look at this and then it goes through the center part here should the filter become blocked for whatever reason we've got this little relief valve here if I just get rid of the rubbish that's in there and I can press down that ball bearing with my screwdriver and I can actually bypass the filter itself let's remove this now it's sprung loaded so I've got to be very careful somebody has had to put that piece on which is the scraper then a, a separator ring with a, another scraper on it another separator another one so you've got like separators and in between each separator you have a scraper now there's no machine going to put this together this is going to be put together by hand let's remove this screw here and take the whole assembly out so if I remove this center shaft now center shaft removed take away this part so the fluid through there through the hole fill the chamber under pressure the pressure will force it through the actual filter and it will go down through this hole here and then exit through here and again we've just got this little pressure relief valve should the filter become blocked but as again previously described the engineers every now and again would twist that through a number of rotations and that would actually clean the filter so quite a simple design but as you can see hundreds of parts to make up this filter <laughs>